Welcome to Al Jazeera channel where we will explain the solution of some statics problems. These problems are from the 14 edition of Engineering Mechanics book written by Hibbler and published by Pearson. All problems here are solved using the parallelogram and trigonometry rules, where if we have two forces F1 and F2 represented by these two arrows and acting on point A force F2 can be moved so, its start coincide with the end of F1. Consequently, the resultant force R is represented by an arrow starts from point A and end at the end of F2 form a triangle ABC. So, the following equations can be used to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force R. Let us now solve problem number F21 in the second chapter. For the system of forces acting on the screw I shown in the figure, Determine the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the screw I and its direction measured clockwise from the x-axis. The first step to solve such problem is to draw the free body diagram that represents this system of force like this. Now move F2 so its tail overlap the head of F1. Then draw an arrow representing the resultant force starting from A and ending at the head of F2. This forms the triangle ABC. These two angles are alternative. So, they are equal. Consequently, angle B equals 60 plus 45 equal 105 degree. Applying the cosine law to find the magnitude of the resultant force results in R equals square root of 2 to the power 2 plus 6 to the power 2 minus 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 6 multiplied by cosine 105. So, the magnitude of the resultant force R equals 6.8 kN. To find the measure of angle A we can use the sine law. We know the values of R, angle B, and F2. So, 6 divided by sine A equals 6.8 sine 105. After rearrangement, sine A equals 6 multiplied by sine 105 divided by 6.8 equals 0.853. So, the measure of angle A equals sine inverse of 0.853 equals 58.5 degree. The direction of the resultant force R measured clockwise from the x-axis is represented by angle theta, where the measure of theta equals the measure of angle A, plus 45 equals 58.5 plus 45 equal 103.5 degree. Finally, the resultant force R has a magnitude of 6.8 kN and inclined by angle 103.5 degree measured clockwise from the x-axis. Let us solve problem 2-6. For the system of forces shown in this figure, determine the magnitude of the resultant force R. The two forces F1 and F2 then find its direction, measured clockwise from the positive U axis. As usual, the free body diagram has to be drawing as shown. Since the angle between the U axis and the V axis is 75 degree and the angle between F1 and V axis is 30 degrees then the angle between F1 and U axis is 45 degrees. Next, move F2 so, the tail of the arrow representing this force be concurrent with the head of the arrow represents F1. In this triangle, we know the measure of two angles, one is 45 degrees while the other is 30 degrees and their summation is 75. Consequently, the measure of the third one is 180 minus 75 equals 105 degrees. It is obvious that this is the angle between the two forces F1 and F2. Now, draw an arrow starts from the tail of F1 and ends at the head of F2. This arrow represents the resultant force of the two forces F1 and F2. In the triangle ABC, applying the cosine law, results in R equals 8.03 kN. Next, it is required to find the direction of the resultant force R, measured clockwise from the positive U axis or the angle theta. We know that the measure of angle A equals theta plus 45 degrees. So, if we find the measure of angle A we can obtain the measure of theta. Using the sine law, results in sine A equal F2 multiplied by sine B divided by R or the measure of angle A equals sine inverse of F2 multiplied by sine B divided by R equals sine inverse of 6 multiplied by sine 105 divided by 8.03 equals 46.2 degrees. We know that the measure of angle A equals theta plus 45 degrees. So, 
the measure of angle theta equals the measure of angle a minus 45 degrees equals 46.2 minus 45 equals 1.2 degrees. Finally, the magnitude of resultant force of F1 and F2 is 8.03 kN and its direction is 1.2 degrees, measured clockwise from the positive U axis. The next problem is 2.7. Resolve the force F1 into components acting along the U and V axes and determine the magnitudes of the components. Draw the free body diagram as before. To find the F1 components acting along the U and V axes, we have to use the parallelogram law. Since the angle between the U axis and the V axis is 75 degree and the angle between F1 and V axis is 30 degrees then the angle between F1 and U axis is 45 degrees. To resolve the force F1 into components acting along the U and V axis we need to draw a parallelogram in which F1 is one of its diagonals and two of its side are on U and V axis. To do this, from the head of F1 draw a line parallel to U axis and intersect V axis at point B. Then, from the head of F1 draw another line parallel to V axis and intersect U axis at point D. Now, the AD arrow represents the F1 component along U axis. While, the AB arrow represents the F1 component along V axis. To find the magnitude of these components let's work with the triangle ABC. Where BC equals AD and the measure of the angle BCA equals the measure of the angle DAC equal 45 degrees. So, the measure of the angle ABC equals 105 degrees. Applying the sine law. F1 divided by sine ABC equal F1U divided by sine BAC. Substitute by known values, 4 divided by sine 105 degree equal F1U divided by sine 30. Solving for F1U results in F1U equals 2.07 kN. Applying the sine law again to find F1V, F1 divided by sine ABC equal F1V divided by sine BCA. Substitute by known values, 4 divided by sine 105 degrees equal F1V divided by sine 45 degrees. Solving for F1V results in F1V equals 2.93 kN. Here are the force F1 components acting along the U and V axis and their magnitudes. Thanks for watching. If you like this video so press like and share it. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. See you soon.